technology is changing at a breakneck speed, but what are those top technologies that you need to be aware of as you enter the 2020s? I'm gonna talk about that here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients through their digital transformation journeys. And as I mentioned, technology is changing very quickly. There's a proliferation of new technologies, technology is evolving, and businesses are finally finding ways to use technology to enable their businesses be more profitable, be more efficient. So what I want to do today is talk about the top 12 trends that you should be aware of as far as technology trends in the 2020s and beyond. And be sure to stick around to the end of this video because the last one, number 12 on this list, is something that will probably surprise you. One of the biggest trends we're seeing in the industry right now is the whole evolution of blockchain. And for those of you that don't know, blockchain is a way to track data and to track the movement of goods and services throughout a, a supply chain. And so, for example, organizations that manufacture food can track where the raw materials came from and where it was distributed, what end consumer purchased the product, all that sort of thing can be tracked through blockchain technology. Similarly, cryptocurrency is another technology that is enabled by blockchain. And you also have financial services organizations that can track financial transactions and blockchain can be a way to track those transactions and track the flow of money and, and the people that are transacting those sorts of financial instruments. So those are just a few examples of how blockchain is revolutionizing how technology can enable supply chains and financial services and other types of business processes in the enterprise technology space. With the proliferation of technology that I mentioned at the beginning of this video comes the increased risk of cybersecurity hacks. So the ability to lock down systems and to prevent hacks and intruders both internally and externally from your organization, that's a big trend going forward. So organizations and applications and technologies that can master this whole concept of cybersecurity as a way to secure and protect data and sensitive information, those are the organizations that are gonna win out in the future. So cybersecurity is something that you should be having on your radar as you think about your digital strategy going forward into the 2020s. Another trend you may have heard about, but may not be sure how it's actually being used is artificial intelligence and machine learning. And AI and machine learning is something that's been mastered by some of the big tech companies like uh, Google and Facebook in terms of determining what ads you might see or what shows up in your feed on your social media. That's probably the most common example of how artificial intelligence and machine learning is being deployed in today's day and age. And e-commerce providers as well are leveraging AI and machine learning Companies like Amazon and Alibaba and some of the big e-commerce retailers are using machine learning and artificial intelligence to use data to figure out what exactly people are going to do on their website, to anticipate what purchases they might make, what upsell opportunities might exist, what products or services they want to see when they visit the website. That's another use case for artificial intelligence and machine learning. And even the more mainstream widespread enterprises are beginning to use artificial intelligence and machine learning. So enterprise resource planning systems like ERP systems are starting to bake machine learning and artificial intelligence into their core capabilities in business processes and functions as simple as accounts payable, for example. Now you can automate some of those accounts payable invoice processing processes in a way that's enabled by artificial intelligence and machine learning. So as artificial intelligence and machine learning continues to proliferate throughout different sorts of technologies and different use cases, you're gonna see a lot more of that going forward in the future. Another technology trend that has become mainstream is this whole concept of cloud computing. So enterprise resource providers, human capital resource providers, supply chain technologies, even consumer technologies like Facebook and Google, those are all examples of technologies that are hosted in the cloud. They're enabled by the cloud. They're not hosted within the four walls of any one organization and even larger enterprises and organizations are starting to leverage the cloud. They're moving their core systems that they used to host on site, on premise. They're starting to move those technologies to the cloud and letting other providers host those solutions. 
So you have companies such as Microsoft with their Azure offering or Amazon with their Amazon Web Services or AWS, big, massive technology providers that are making it more cost effective and scalable for organizations to move their applications to the cloud. So when you look at the development of these technology companies that are providing cloud solutions, combined with the fact that the enterprise technology vendors are moving their solutions to the cloud, you can see that we've definitely reached a tipping point with where cloud computing is headed in the 2020s. Now that enterprises and organizations throughout the world have been using big, massive enterprise technologies for 20 to 30 years, they've accumulated mass amounts of data. And the problem is, is they haven't figured out what to do with this data. They have all this historic data, these historic records of what purchases consumers have made, financial results, even transactions throughout the organization, but they haven't quite figured out yet how to crack the code on how to make better use of that data to make better decisions and to anticipate what might happen in the future. So that's where big data and analytics comes in, which is a big trend that we're seeing a movement toward. And that is the use of technology to leverage data to predict the future. And it's similar to machine learning and artificial intelligence, minus the part about learning and adapting to the data that's being fed through the system. So in other words, analytics is more focused on predicting what might happen based on historic trends. Some of the common use cases might be predicting seasonality or different changing consumer behaviors or macroeconomic trends that could affect demand for your product or service. That's an example of how data can be used historically to predict what might happen in the future. So be on the lookout for opportunities to leverage big data and analytics to further your technology initiatives within your organization. In today's post-pandemic world where humans have become accustomed to doing more transactions and interactions digitally versus in person, the whole concept of the customer experience has become even more important than it already was headed into the 2020s. And when we talk about customer experience, it's about everything that a customer experiences from the time they first interact with your organization, even before they become a customer, until after they've become a customer, until the service they receive as a customer, and everything in between. So what does that customer journey and that customer experience look like? And what are the technologies that can help you optimize that? Now, a lot of times people will think of e-commerce providers, e-commerce technologies that help you create a better website or help you make it easier to buy your product or service or learn more about your organization online. And that certainly is a foundational stepping stone or starting point for customer experience. But typically you wanna go even further than potential e-commerce technologies. You wanna look at other technologies that can help enable a better customer experience. So this is where technologies such as customer relationship management come into play. Technologies such as ServiceNow is meant to provide sort of a, a ticketing or a customer experience type of uh, interaction digitally with your customers. Those are just a couple examples of many that are available to you in the marketplace. So if you are a B to C type of organization that's selling directly to consumers, or even if you're selling to other businesses or other organizations, that whole customer experience is something you'll want to be thinking about as a technology trend here in the 2020s. So just like customer experience is an important trend in technology today, so too is the employee experience. What does it look like when an employee first gets hired by your organization or even when they're first recruited by your organization? What does it look like after they become an employee? What does the performance management look like? How are they mentored? How are they trained? How are they onboarded? How are they offboarded when they leave the organization? That entire life cycle of the employee journey and the employee experience is something that organizations are using technology to enable even more so now in a post-pandemic world where attrition is relatively high, people are uncertain about their health, their safety, their job security, all those things play into the need for this whole employee experience. So one of the common technologies that we see enable this employee experience is the human capital management technologies. These are technologies that allow you from the time a potential candidate first interacts with your organization, all the way through the time they're hired, onboarded, mentored, trained, all that good stuff, that's all managed via human capital management systems, or at least it can be. 
So think of your employee experience and think about technology that can enable that because that is one of the biggest trends we're seeing here in the 2020s. Robotics is another emerging trend and it's actually something that's been around for a long time. Manufacturers for the last, I'd say 10 to 20 years, have really fine tuned and optimized the use of robotics on manufacturing shop floors. They've automated the production of different products and materials, but it's also something that's emerging as a trend in other non-manufacturing areas as well. So for example, probably the most common thing that we're starting to see is this whole concept of robotic process automation. So automating different processes and making it easier for technology to do what humans used to do. So I used the example before about processing invoices or taking customer orders or closing the books at the end of a financial period. A lot of those processes and sub-processes typically would have required human intervention and human interaction, but robotic process automation is automating some of those processes to where humans focus more on the exceptions rather than doing every single transaction within a system. So as you're evaluating potential technologies for your organization, something to think about is how you might leverage robotics and robotic process automation within your organization. Now, the ninth thing on our list is integration and architecture. And integration and architecture is something that's not new. It's been around for a long time, but it's becoming a skill set and a commodity that's even more important today and it's becoming increasingly important in the future. And the reason for that is as technologies change, as all these new technologies are, are popping up in the world around us, organizations have more options to choose from and they're more likely to move to sort of a best of breed model where they're leveraging multiple technologies for different parts of their business. Now, the good news is you have lots of technologies to choose from. The bad news is tying together all those technologies can be quite challenging. So the whole concept of solution architecture and integration of systems and knowing how to tie together systems strategically and leverage a overall technology roadmap to enable your business is something that's becoming quite the hot commodity. So really look at your solution architecture, your integration and the capabilities of any sort of technology to enable that capability as you evaluate potential technologies for your organization. Number 10 on our list is e-commerce technology. Now I mentioned e-commerce earlier in the context of employee experience, but it's also worth calling out e-commerce as a standalone technology, largely because not just business to consumer providers or B2C providers, but also business to business or B2B providers are finding that they need to have more of a digital footprint in how they interact with their customers and some of their constituents outside the organization. So e-commerce technology can be a great way to help your customers understand what services and products you provide. They can interact, ask questions, purchase the product, get service online. All that sort of stuff can be enabled largely by e-commerce technologies. So one thing about the pandemic world that we're living in or the post-pandemic world we're living in is that e-commerce has become that much more important even for B2B providers. Just about every organization we work with has to start thinking like an e-commerce provider, even if they're not selling directly to consumers like the traditional e-commerce players may have, they still need to think about how can we leverage e-commerce technologies to better service our customers, whether they're end consumers or other organizations or some combination of all of the above. So e-commerce is something that is evolving. It's becoming even more important here in the 2020s. Number 11 on our list is mobility. It's a trend that's been emerging even in the 2010s. Coming into the 2020s, it was already an emerging technology and it's even more important here today. And the reason for that is because we're all using devices. More of us are working remotely or in hybrid work situations where we're sometimes in the office, sometimes we're at home, sometimes we're out in the field, sometimes we're in multiple places or need to be in multiple places at once. So with the use of mobile technology comes the need to leverage enterprise technologies that you may have had to use at your office, you now need to be accessing and using outside your office. So that whole mobile technology trend that was already starting is really accelerating and being fast-tracked here in the 2020s as more organizations find value in mobile technologies that can help enable a flexible and largely remote workforce. 
So number 12 on our list and the thing that may surprise you the most because it really has nothing to do with technology, but it is a key trend to enable all the different technologies that we've talked about as strategic trends for the 2020s is organizational change management. Another way to think about this is the people side of the equation. The 11 technologies we talked about are great enablers of change and business process improvement and business model enhancements, but none of that is gonna matter or work if you don't address the people side of the equation. Now of all the things on our list of 12 here, organizational change management is the one that's probably been around the longest and it's probably the one that has changed the least for better or for worse. So there's nothing new about it, but change management is becoming even more important in the 2020s as our technological advancements improve, as the technological opportunities continue to increase, that people side of the equation becomes even more important. So one of the biggest trends to be thinking about is the use of change management and the addressing of the human aspect of technology initiatives. And with that, that really enables the other 11 trends that we've talked about here today. Now, if you'd like to learn more about some of these trends and other trends that we're seeing in the marketplace, I encourage you to download our 2021 Digital Transformation Report. That report contains a number of best practices and trends that we're seeing in the industry, as well as independent rankings and reviews of different technologies across a number of different enterprise categories like ERP and CRM and HCM, e-commerce, et cetera. So I encourage you to check that out, download that in the link below. I've also included a number of other links that I think will help you in your transformation journey. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day.